What's up, everyone? Thank you for tuning in again. Uh, another episode, um, AE86 SR5 to GTS conversion. Um, now, first, I wanted just to say uh, before we start the video, uh, and I meant to do this a, a couple of videos ago, but um, just the way that the editing worked out, it wasn't it wasn't really a good timing. But um, I just wanted to say uh, for my 555 subscriber giveaway that happened a while back, obviously. Um, I just want to say thank you uh, and for for doing that. Uh, everybody that participated in, in that, um, I appreciate it. And congratulations again to the winner, uh, BSR uh, or BS Record. And he, he you know, he's got a, a channel on on YouTube as well. I'm sure you know about it. He's doing an AE86 SR5 to GTS conversion as well. A free T-shirt, uh, AE86 style T-shirt, and also adding on to the uh, the 555 subscriber giveaway. Uh, I'm up to over 800 subscribers now, and um, and that's fantastic. So uh, I want to say thank you all to those who have subscribed. If you're watching this video and you're not subscribed yet, uh, just go ahead and do it. Be like AE86 stuff, and, and uh, that's what I'm bringing. So. so anyway, without delaying this any further, let's go ahead and get this video started. Thank you for watching. Now, I've got pretty much everything sorted out. I've been driving this car, and um, it, it does need an alignment, though. But what I'm going to do, what I want to do before I do take it to the shop is um, kind of sort the, the camber out here at the house uh, because I don't really want them monkeying around too much with the uh, with these plates on the top. So my goal is to kind of measure the camber and also adjust it as best as I can. I want to get it to about negative one degrees uh, because this is a street, I mean, this is a car that I'll be daily driving. So um, I don't want to, you know, set it up, you know, with too much negative camber and have the uh, tires wearing out prematurely. So uh, luckily, you know, solid axle, don't have to worry about the rears, uh, but the fronts, let's see what we can do here. So you're probably wondering what how do we measure the camber? Well, um, I have a tool. I've had this for a while and I've only had to use it one other time and it worked pretty good. It's, I got this from, there's a company called Speedway and they sell a bunch of racing products and products for mainly like old school muscle cars and stuff, but they do have some uh, pretty neat, uh, you know, universal stuff in there as well uh, that can be used for imports or whatever. Basically, what this is is it's got a level on it. You can see that bulb, and um, these these are two magnets, and they will say, you know, stick to the, uh, the to the hub, or you know, magnetized to the hub, and then you will adjust using this uh, knob until the bubble gets to the level point and you count however many you see these lines on the gauge here each line represents one eighth of a degree so one time all the way around is one degree all right so i'll show you how, here in a minute how this works so basically, let's see, the first thing I need to do, or I've already done it, but you want to straighten out your wheels. Straighten out the wheel on the uh, on your steering. So, you know, and you want to you want to do this on a, on a level surface as well. Like in a garage, you don't want to be on the slanted, uh, you know, driveway or something like that. So, um, all right, so let's get, so let's, uh, let's see how this thing goes. Okay, the first thing we need to do is get this gauge set to zero. And how to do that, um, you can see, actually you can tell pretty easily. If you look at it like this, you turn this wheel, see like I turn that, it's one, that's one degree. You can see how this comes up a little bit uh, and in, in uh, relation to this side. See, watch, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll just do an exaggerated. See how I'm, I keep turning this, and see how that's higher now than the rest and that's and it kind of dips down when you get in here all right so basically you want to 
go all the way back down to zero. And if we do this way, keep going, you'll see how this side is now higher. All right, and vice versa, you see how it's lower now? So it's pretty easy to tell where zero is with this tool, but um, if you just want to double check, you can use a level to have a level here and just hold this up like this. And let me see if I catch this on the camera. All right, we're gonna set the level to zero, you know, level anyways. And we'll look at our tool. All right, you guys are just gonna have to believe me. I know you can't see that little bubble inside, but they're both level. So now we know our tool is set to zero. So now we can do some measurements. I couldn't really get this cap off right here. Um, it's it's kind of it's clipped in, and I'm too lazy to take the wheel off and then take the cap off and all that stuff. So um, another way you can do this is get a long piece of metal or something to bridge this gap right here where the on the lips all right and i've opted for this piece of metal because uh, i could use that level you know that i just used for the zeroing out on the tool but um i like metal better that that level is a as a piece plastic and i don't really trust the straightness of it um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use this level right here and i've got this square all right, and I've already checked the straightness of it, and it's pretty good. It's it's actually it's actually straight, dead straight. All right, there's no gaps or anything like that. So I feel pretty comfortable using this piece of metal right here that I had, and I'm just gonna set this like so. Set it up like this. All right, and you want to go right where the um, the hub is, center of the wheel. All right, just like that. And then we're gonna take our tool. this okay now let's look at it okay you can see that the bubble is off now it's this way so I'm assuming I have negative camber because it's lowered so let's go ahead and see how much so remember, each each uh, mark is a one eighth of a degree. So negative. We're gonna go counterclockwise to, in order to uh, center this level up. So we got one, two, three, four, five. All right, there's one degree. three, four, you can see the bubble is moving. All right, there it is, perfect. Okay, so that was one, two, that was four marks. So one degree plus four marks. So that's one degree and four eighths or one half of a degree. So one and a half degree negative camber is what we got on this wheel. Um, that's actually that's actually um, tolerable, you know, for street. I was kind of like wanting more of like one degree. Um, around one degree because I don't want to like wear my tires out too too fast on the inside. So I'm not really a, I'm like an expert on, on 
how many degrees you need to be in order to keep that from happening. So I'm just going to go safe with one degree. All right, so now that we know, we have um, one and a half degree off. See, it's zeroed out again. All right. So we can make adjustments on our um, upper mounts there to compensate for that. So let's see what we can do here. Okay, first you need to jack the car up, get the weight off of the suspension so that you can adjust it. Okay, so now to adjust this, um, you can see I'm going to move, have to move this out to the outside of the car in order to adjust for the negative camber. Um, if you move it this way inside, towards the inside of the car, you're going to get more negative camber outside is more positive camber all right and you can see that this there's not a whole lot of movement left right here uh, these bolts are maxed out so you can actually relocate them inside see right here so what I'm gonna do is take these out and put them onto the next holes there and uh, and then we'll go from there all right, so we'll just take this Allen key and Now you can see that the bolts have been moved. I got a lot more room for adjustment here now. Um, and also, if you look closely, you can see right here, there's, see these little lines right here? Those actually mean something. Um, they are, each one, I'm not sure how much is a, it's a fraction of a degree, obviously. Uh, in the instructions, they did not mention um, how many uh, degrees that is but uh, it would have been nice if they had done that I don't know if there's an, a, like a universal number uh, but I guess I'm just gonna have to do this the hard way and just kind of play with it so I'm gonna loosen all four of the screws and see if we can move this uh, to the outside a little bit um, as you can see this moves pretty freely now like this side to side and you can see how the wheel adjusts as well um, but if you look on the side again over here there's a line right here on this thing right here you see that line right there running up and down and you use that in order to, you know, gauge how much you need to move a left or right over here. So when I had the car, when it was at negative one and a half degrees, this line was up here three marks up. Okay. One, two, three. So there's a, on this, there's a, like a, a line and a zero right there. So going to put it there and, and then remeasure. kind of working the suspension there so get a more accurate reading all right so let's take another reading here let's see how much it moved okay we zeroed out our gauge
Okay, so now we got, let's go ahead and do a one degree. There's one degree right there. And the bubble is going too far. Okay, actually, it's looking pretty good. Yeah. It might be just a hair. See, if I go one eighth the other way, it's it's not too far. So, it's more like it's more like uh, fifteen sixteenths of a degree. See, because eight divided by eight, uh, I mean times two is sixteen. So each half is a sixteenth. Or each, if you go half mark, half mark, that's a sixteenth, sixteenth, sixteenth. So you're you're looking at um, fifteen sixteenth negative camber. So not quite negative one camber. So it's actually it's actually pretty good right there. So I like that. I'm gonna keep that right there, and then I'm gonna go do the other side. The other side, um, by the way, since it's the same process, I'm not, I probably won't show it, but it was w negative one and a quarter off. So negative one and a quarter, so I only need to lose a quarter. So I moved it three notches on this side, on the top hat here. Three notches, and I got about a half of a degree. So I'll go on the other side and move it... Uh, one and a half notches and I should get about a quarter of a degree that way so I'm gonna to go to the other side and move it back uh, um, go to the other side and move it back one and a half marks on the top hat here on the top uh, mount and that should you know all things being equal it should it should get me to about 15 16 of a degree all right. All right, guys and gals, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed uh, what you saw and maybe learned a little something. Um, I tried to bring what was a little difficult to find on YouTube. Um, you know, I, I've seen videos <clears throat> just like little minute clips of somebody telling you how to how to do something but they're not actually showing you how to do it so that's kind of what I wanted to bring with this video and um, I hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, it was fun making so um, I'll leave a link to I'll leave a link in the description of that that tool that that measures the camber uh, in the in the description so that way uh, you'll be able to just click right on that link and it'll take you right to the that actual tool it's not very expensive I think it's like 40 bucks or something but it's uh, I think it's well worth the money especially if you're gonna be doing track stuff you know because I mean if you have to take it to a shop every time you want to change your camera you know that's probably not gonna be very fun for the pocketbook and also you can you know you know you can adjust on the fly while you're at the track so you know that's a good a good tool to have for sure but anyways like I said thank you guys for um, all 800 and 800 plus subscribers thank you